Right in Scotland. Let's go. <laughs> go down the back of your throat, didn't it? <laughs> Choking, are you? Oh, well, shit. Well, I I'll do you. swallowed too quickly. Time has been so hard on us, my friend. We are currently exploring Scotland's southwest coast. Well, we're trying to. So far, it's broke our dog, our van, and this week it tries to break me. But none of that takes away from how spectacular this place is. With its nature filled forests, insanely beautiful scenery, stunning coastline, and some of the most magical park ups we have ever found, it really has it all. This week, we are leaving the coast and heading inland to explore its largest lot. No matter what they call it. coastline is so so pretty I, I don't know why I wasn't expecting it to be because everyone kept saying to us when we've done our trips to Norway you should come to Scotland it's, it's just like it but it is really making me miss Norway and there's some wooden houses and stuff like that oh I am just loving this drive time has been so hard on us my friend We are just coming up to a place where Emily assures me where if I stick the van in neutral, I will roll uphill. Um, it's going to happen, I have faith. But it doesn't make any sense, so we're on the hill now, we just need to find somewhere to pull over and apparently if I put the van in neutral and just wait, the van will roll uphill. It's a heavy van, you know. Do it, do it. You have to believe in these things. So you have to fiddle about with your road position a little bit, but I definitely think I've found it. Jesus, there's cars. This is not safe. Let me show you. Very much in neutral, very much rolling backwards. That is actually pretty cool. The van is actually rolling uphill. We are at Electric Bray, and thanks to the figuration of the land makes it Oh, it's, it's just so random and weird. It's rolling uphill. How cool is that? Ooh, I'm going at speed now. It took us a few attempts to, to kind of get the right spot, but yeah, she's still going. It's so cool. Now, this is literally just a main road. So if you do come here and have a look, please be careful. But there are signs either side of it saying Caution, slow moving vehicles, because clearly a few people do try it. And you can come and do it with a tennis ball or a bike or anything like that. But it's actually pretty cool. So that was Electric Bray, definitely worth a stop if you're doing this route. And now we're on to another stop, but Emily won't tell me what it is. No, you just need to follow the sat nav, please. Is that it? Is that what you bought me? Yeah. You are kidding me. Just find me park. Oh look, you missed the parking spot there. Concentrate on the parking, Louise. You brought me all the way here. Yeah. Yeah, I have. It was, it was a recommendation. So oh, I'm not gonna fit in any of these parking spaces. They're all small town parking spaces. Unbelievable. So whenever we come on these kinds of trips, Emily normally does a little bit of route planning and she makes, puts little pins on a, like a Google map and then we follow those pins around and it gives us our rough route. Now I normally look at the pins only the day before to see where we're driving to next, like how far we've got to go, if it's going to be any good for parking, but I didn't do that this morning. I wish I had because this stop is ridiculous. It's an ice cream shop. Now this came highly recommended to me by a few people, so how could I not try it? So let's go and get Misery Guts uh, a milkshake, shall we? Pleased with yourself, are you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what are they? Well, how can you have that? Nice yeah, and how much did they cost? <laughs> how much did they cost? They don't. Go <laughs> on, how much? For the, for the viewers, they're going to want to know these things. 
Mum ham something. Nine pound something. Yeah, but mum was a deluxe one. Because it was biscoff, yours was just crappy banana. And I also treated us. Got you a Terry's chocolate orange brownie. Yep. And then I've got a Kinder Breno blondie. How good does that look? There you go then. I suppose we're going to stop here for lunch and we'll see you lot later. Such a greedy pig, aren't you? <gasps> no. It's a milkshake. As we headed inland, Scotland was about to gift us with one of the most beautiful drives, starting with passing under this, Burton Viaduct. The further inland we went, the more breathtaking it became. The single track road that leads to the lock passes through the Scottish hills and pine forest before eventually opening up to the water right beside you. We drove the entire length of the lock and found somewhere to park. This is honestly one of the best park ups we've ever found in any country. Believe it or not, this is one of the best places in spite of the conditions we've ever parked up. Yesterday, if you didn't know that this was a lock, you'd have been convinced that it was the sea. The wind was so strong that there was actual waves in this lock. This is Loch Doon, and even in the rain, it is so picturesque. Now, hopefully, I got enough on the drone yesterday to do it some justice, because I got no chance today, I don't think. But it is, well, hopefully you can appreciate how amazingly beautiful this place is. It is absolutely gorgeous, full of hikes, full of walking. The plan was, to go and do some wild camping here, but I have got zero chance, I think, of getting a tent down on the ground because it is that boggy. There is some forest, so I could take the hammock, but we've tried to wait out the weather for two days now to try and show you this place, but it just keeps coming. It is relentless. The storm yesterday, I had to move the van, so we was all the way down the bottom. Uh, so this lake, this lock's like five miles long, so we parked right down the bottom. Beautiful park up, one of the best we've ever had. But as soon as the storm came in, that was it. We lost internet, we lost phone signal, which obviously Emily needs for work. It was very exposed down there. So I managed to find a little nook that we could get the van in. So we've been staying there, but we do need to move on because we can't just sit here waiting out the rain because I'll put the forecast on the screen now. There's more coming. Now I know what you're gonna say, it's Scotland, of course it's raining, it's November, yes, I know. We are very well kitted out and prepared for the rain, we do quite well in the rain. However, we've had locals apologising, like, like it's not their fault, literally apologising, apparently it's wetter, and if you've seen the previous videos, it is just, I think we've had two days where we've had dry spells where the sun's come out and the rest of the time it's just been torrential, but it is not ruining it for us because it means we've got the place all to ourselves. Wild camping, vans and tents I think must be incredibly popular here. There's these little fire pits dotted about everywhere. And when I say everywhere, I mean everywhere. I must have seen at least, I don't know, 50, 60, 70 of these all over the ground when I've been out walking. And sometimes like there's two or three right next to each other. There's even one up there in a passing place. And it's like, come on, this place is gonna get shut down pretty soon, I think, because with the fire pits, there's the usual barbecues left behind, a chair, some litter. It's such a shame to see it. Sorry, I mean, look. Yeah, there's no way I'm pitching a tent in this. 
yeah, such a shame to see it because I'm absolutely 100% convinced that this place is going to get shut down to camping soon if this behaviour carries on. And we all know that it will. So real, 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 real shame because they're quite welcome in here. It's one of this area, South West Scotland, one of the best areas we've been in the UK so far for wild camping. And we're going to lose it and it is just a crying shame because look at it. This is the complete wrong lens, but if you look, we have a very short, probably, break in the weather. So we'll have a go with the drone and see if I can show you. Ooh, see if I can show you around properly. I might need to put this camera down though. Oh, this is so difficult. With the uh, with the good weather comes the wind. So apologies, the audio is probably going to be crap because I've got no mic on because of the rain. This is so much fun. Be a YouTuber, they said. It'll be great fun, they said. It is. There we go then, that was it. Winds, it doesn't look too windy down here, but up there, once you get out of this shelter of these few trees, it is very windy. Drone didn't like it. Next bad weather front's rolling in, so I'm gonna run back to the van, hopefully, before I get another soaking from the rain. Also, I put my tripod down in some poo, and with the disrespect that's clearly going on here, I couldn't tell you if it was sheep, dog, or human, so I wanna get that off me. Before I get back to the van, with rain comes rainbows, and I've probably got a few seconds. Oh, sh Oh, I'm gonna leave that in just for shits and giggles. I've got a few seconds. Ah, don't run across the bogs. I've got a few seconds to get this. I don't know if the GoPro's gonna get it, but look at that. That is a beaut. Ah, oh, I'm in the complete wrong place. I think we're gonna have to go for a GoPro photo. Oh my word. I need to be over there, but we'll give it a go. No, it's gone. And like that, it was gone. Oh, real, real shame that we missed that with the camera and the drone, but never mind. At least I've got a shitty tripod and sore knees now, so it's things like that. You can see why people come and camp here. What a beautiful spot to wake up to in the morning. And I know what some of you are going to say. Just get on with it, Lou, and camp in the rain. I would, I actually love camping in the rain, but the problem is with three wet coats, two wet sets of trousers, a wet dog, a wet cat, because she goes out in the rain, I've got nowhere to dry out all my gear and it's going to be raining for the next, well, forever by the looks of things. So yeah, Emily's not going to appreciate a wet tent trying to dry out in the van. So unfortunately not this time, but we <sighs> you never know. Sipping coffee under the apple tree, this gentle man lady, you're a good man, quite the best man. Don't like he it, is he? not happy that we're leaving him behind. The weather has given us a very brief interlude, so we're going to go and check out what we're doing. Dalkerny Falls. It's a waterfall that we're going to have a quick pit stop at before we get to our next park up. Yes, and if you do want to come here, the track up is one of those roads where you get on it and you kind of think, yeah, should I have come up this? Because if there's nowhere to turn around at the top, I am stuffed. It's very, very narrow, bumpy. Larger motorhomes, I would say, avoid it, especially in the winter, because it is a uh, potholy and slippy and horrendous, isn't it? It is indeed. <laughs> this is why I would not walk AJ, because it's really slippery and it's quite steep, and we all know how his legs are. How are your little legs getting down oh, no, this? It's really high. Look. How are you going to get back up? <laughs> you need a bank up at every step, aren't you? Wow. I like it 
like it. It's really impressive, actually. It's bigger than what I thought it was going to be. Definitely a little hidden gem. Uh, way more than I was expecting, actually. It was just a little pin on Google Maps. So, yeah, if you can get it up here, then... <laughs> That's so bad. If you can get up here, then I definitely recommend. I didn't even do that one on purpose. I recommend giving it a look, because it is a pretty cool little spot. It is, yeah, but sensible Sally shoes, please. Right, should we go and get parked up? Yes, let's do it. Maybe if you take a run up, Em, it'll be easier. Such a twat. I thought you were leaving without a sound. My little world, you are both pros and cons. It's hard to admit when you feel you don't belong. Here we go then, folks. Look, rebel without a cause, breaking all the rules again. What are you doing back there, Em? <laughs> Do not put that on, Louise. She's back there. She was too hungry to wait the 26 minutes we got to go to a park up, so she's making a sandwich. You are going to be in big trouble, lady. The van's not moving. We're on a single track road. There's literally us and the sheep. And one thing I'm loving about this part of Scotland is we are barely seeing another soul. So for days, I don't think we've even seen another car, have we? No. Nope. Not on these roads. Obviously, the main roads they are. But when we was around the lock and everything, we pretty much had it to ourselves. Yes, the weather is crap, so no one else probably wants to be out camping in it. But definitely, definitely a massive point for this part, this part of Scotland at this time of year. I can't use that. I am using that. Can I have a sandwich? Yeah, I'm making one. Thank you. You're out where you're laughing, the curls in your hair I wish that I could tell you how much I really care Don't get my way, I'm trying to cook. What is cooking? We're going to have some skinny pizzas tonight. Skinny pizzas is in there good for us, or skinny pizzas they're on squished flat bread? Skinny pizzas they're on squished flat bread. <laughs> <laughs> She's going back to do some editing, but yes, I'm going to cook up some skinny pizzas tonight because we've managed to find a really nice place in the forest, but it took us quite a while to find it because of the internet signal and the phone signal was pretty bad. So we need something quick and easy and that is what it is. We all know Louise is a weirdo and has pineapple, but I'm going to have sausages tonight and I want to know whether you think that that's weird or whether that's normal, because I think that's going to be nice and tasty. Sausages, a bit of mushroom, a bit of cheese, that's going to be good. It's going to be sausages good. Sausages on a pizza it's, is wrong. It's, Veggie sausages as well. It's going to be good, honestly. And if you haven't tried it, I think you should. We have come to the conclusion that the weather forecast for Scotland, you might as well not bother. We have got bright blue skies. They're not even giving that now. If we check the weather forecast now, it says torrential rain and wind. We do have the wind though, don't we? We do, yeah. We've got our woolly hats on, protect our ears, and we shall be fine. <laughs> you alright there? Go for a little trip? <laughs> So it's in a pixie? Yep, yeah, just floating about over there. Not everybody gets to see pixies though, so... Only pixies can see other pixies. I reckon <laughs> that's why you can see them. That is why I can see them. Superstitious, kind of vicious. No, no, I can't work. I was getting lost. It's really nice, isn't it? I love this type of forest. Look at the trees. Why? With all like the Every, mossy stuff. Everything's like. covered in moss, isn't it? Oh, Absolutely everything. Honestly, it's, it just makes it magical. And since it's coming up to Christmas, that's even better. This forest is a very, very short walk from the car park where we're parked up in, and it is an amazing park up. Summer absolutely loves it. She's been going crazy. She loves the forest. 
take her out. She's been skipping over all the moss, climbing up trees. I can't get that on camera yet, but I'm trying. So yeah, ideal for her. So we lost a lot of the morning doing that with her. Emily's been working, but now we're gonna enjoy this forest. And this is what Emily's talking about, look. Absolutely everything is covered in moss, not just the trunks. It's all the roots, it's all the branches. Quite a bit of mushrooms going on as well. Like this, every single branch on this tree is covered in moss. There are absolutely loads of these trees all like falling down everywhere around here. And I don't know, there's just something about it. Like look at the size of that. It's just, it's mental, isn't it? Do you not think? And how have they all fallen down? Wind. It must get bloody windy here. I'd say there's so. There's loads of them everywhere. I was considering a bit of hammock camping, but with the trees down the way they are and the wind that they're giving tonight, I think it's 40, 50 miles an hour or something overnight. Um, probably not the safest option. There's a whole wall of fallen trees. Looks like they've all fallen down as one like terraced row of trees. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? That has got to get super, super windy for sure. I wonder what um, mile an hour it has to be to actually blow the the tree down. Because obviously it's going to have quite a few years of like swaying, knocking, knocking. <laughs> yeah. Uh, FYI, that's what Emily looks like when she's had a few to drink as well. <laughs> And then obviously, yeah, that's, that's got to be some wind, right? Some power, because them roots go far. I reckon you could do it after a curry, get them down. You never know. Deep, deep down on the bottom of the well I don't belong, can't you tell? This place must be hell No more cookies in this jar Could I take it too far? I dwell in the sand like a fish on land This area of Scotland, this southwest coast and inland on this southwest corner is absolutely brilliant and it's an ideal alternative to doing the NC500. If like us you don't have a lot of time or you've got other commitments like a job and stuff and you've only got to fit your trip in in and out of little windows, this is perfect. It's such a forgotten missed area of Scotland, isn't it? It is, yeah, and it's just like on the tip of Scotland as well, just as you enter. So it is an ideal route for a small trip that doesn't take too long because when I looked at it and plotted it out, the actual route, if you were to drive it, is only around 12 to 14 hours. So you could plan it a little bit better than us. <laughs> to be fair, we've had a very many setbacks on this trip and then there's also inland to consider, so that's 12 to 14 hours just around the loop yeah? doing yeah doing the actual loop of the the official southwest coast 500 300 you, it's the kind of trip you could cram it in and do it in two weeks and see absolutely loads or if you wanted to you could stretch it out and spend quite a bit of time up here really exploring every single little area however there are some massive caveats to doing this part of scotland i for one wouldn't want to come here in the summer nearly everywhere is a single track road and if you put lots of camper vans and vehicles it's just going to be a nightmare the park ups, many, many, many great park ups. And when I say many, 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 many for us because there's been no one else here. But if you come yeah. here in summer, the park ups are going to run out pretty quickly. Now, you are allowed to wild camp here, and a lot of car parks accommodate that, but there are limits on the numbers. So some of them will be like only three vans. Now, we've seen it lots and lots of times where it says only three vans, and someone gets there late and they stay, so that's four vans, and someone else gets there late, it's five vans. Please, please, please stick to it. And the way we do this, is when we're looking for somewhere to stay for the night, we have three or four spots in mind so that if we get to the first one and it's really full, yep. we've got others in mind. And if we, if it is a really busy time, we don't even bother with the good ones, we'll go there for the day and then go somewhere else because the locals will get frustrated if they can't park their car to walk their dog or do their usual yep. activities. And then all of these things that they've put in place for camper vans and motorhomes and stuff will get taken away from us. So. Yeah, because the stuff we saw in, in some of the places around the lock, we've seen when we first got here, some of the, the first park up went to it was six vans only when we woke up in the morning there was eight vans it yeah. will get shut down and we will lose it and this is one of the best places we've been for van life in a long time isn't it it is yeah they're just so accommodating and do you know what everyone has been super friendly that we've met yes they? that's like... another thing the locals aren't anti-van so no. you don't have that hostility yet but i do fear that it will come now i know what you're gonna say you've put it all on youtube this that, and the other i would like to think that our subscribers are a very respectful bunch. So please, 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 if it's the first time you come here and we are, you are getting this information from us, make sure that you look after this place because it's an absolute gem in a very dwindling van life landscape that's left in the UK, isn't it? Yeah, that's it. And we just want to keep it like that. And we want to come back and see it again as well, don't yes, we? Yes, and the other thing is, I said I wouldn't come here in summer. 
in the if you're going to come here in the autumn or the winter like us bear in mind scotland is brutal the weather yes we've had more rain than is normal but even still you're on the west coast you're going to get hit with every single front that comes in and there's not a lot to do here if you don't like the outdoors so you would literally just be driving around parking moving on it's not there's not loads of bars restaurants no. cafes any of that kind of thing there really is you've got to like the outdoors haven't you yeah exploring in the forest going along the coast and having a look in the little villages and stuff yeah but also like Lou said bring an array of different clothes <laughs> yes and also bear in mind that a lot of the routes will be shut so there's like Raiders Road there's a yep. forest drive here that's all closed we got to a place on the coast the other day the little coast road it all shuts for the winter so you won't be able to do all the big popular bits in the winter so like I say yep. you really have got to enjoy getting out and exploring in nature haven't you which we do which we really really do now we're gonna go back to the van of some dinner Yes, always hungry, always hungry. I feel I've worked for it though. What have you done? I've done a walk. One of my favourite things about editing is freeze framing on Emily's silly faces, look at them. So we just got back to the van, we're having dinner. What are we having? We are gonna have jambalaya. I can't really do my dance, sorry, because I'm trying to hammer. <laughs> and what is jambalaya? It's a rice dish, right? It is a rice dish, and I use veggie stuff, obviously. This is what it looks like pretty much done. Is it pretty much done? I'm starving. It is pretty much done and it tastes quite good actually. So it's rice, chorizo, and um, obviously if you was a chicken lover, chicken, but I got some mushrooms in there. You can put some peppers in there. Cayenne pepper is in the powder, a bit of chili powder, a bit of like vegetable stuff. In oh, it's lovely. I'm in a proper cooking channel this one. I know, it? honestly, I'm just such a little like culinary delights in the kitchen. Right, you say yes now. Yes now. <laughs> so there we go then, dinner is looking good, can't wait for that. I did just want to say about this uh, area of Scotland, it is very much a well-kept secret. We didn't know much about it really until just before we come here, did we? No, we didn't, no. And I'm kind of in two minds whether to actually tell you a lot about it, but I also think if everyone just flocks to the NC500 and misses out the rest of Scotland, then we're just crowding on the NC500 every single summer when there's so much more that Scotland has to offer. Like, there's so it's not just this bit. There's nice bits dotted all over Scotland. We've done bits on the East Coast before, haven't we, years ago? Yes, very many years ago. Before vans and stuff was a thing, <laughs> and really enjoyed it and didn't get anywhere near the north. So there is so much more to explore and do in Scotland that isn't the NC500. And this route, we've really enjoyed it. You'll notice that I'm having mine in a bowl and Emily's got hers on a plate. And why is that, Em? What are you having with it? Because I need to get rid of some stuff in the fridge because I've got to go through <laughs> shopping go. tomorrow. <laughs> excuse as to why she's having extra we well, got chips and spring rolls for yours yeah so i'm not gonna have a lot of rice i'm just gonna have a little bit i've got to get <laughs> it's not even full portions louise obviously i'm only joking emily is bloody beautiful and can eat what you want can't you that is right and she does and on that note i think we're gonna go because this is probably our last if not second to last night in scotland we do have to start heading south don't we we do, unfortunately. Got a few plans. Yeah, a couple of days in the... Where are we going? Lake District. In the Lake District. We may or may not film it. We may take a couple of days to ourselves. We'll see how we feel when we get there. But I hope you've enjoyed this little jaunt around Scotland. I know it's been delayed with the tyre debacle and AJ's leg and the lodge and all that. But we've thoroughly enjoyed this southwest coast 300, haven't we? We have, yes. And honestly, I cannot wait to come back and explore 
so many other places in Scotland because this has just given me like a little bit of a taste of it and I'm just like oh I love it yes and honestly spread out don't all flock to the same old places because you'll have a much better time there's far more space and hopefully it'll put less of a pressure on those small places and give a bit more tourist economy to the other parts of Scotland which are beautiful definitely so thanks Scotland for having us if you've enjoyed all this do the subscribe thingy or whatever do the the other things up, that YouTube you know likes everyone to do <laughs> and we will see you all on the next one wherever that may be bye